is the maddest you ever were? Uh, was it Joey at Martinsville? Is that the maddest? <laughs> uh, you know, I, I don't know. I've been mad after some. You, you really, you kind of get mad when it's not only intentional. You know, but that one was just different because, like, I felt like it was intentional. Maybe it was, maybe it wasn't. But then, you know, it wasn't really that. It was all the comments after the race, the comments the next week, the race at Talladega the week after that when, you know, he pulled two car lengths behind me on a restart on purpose to drag my row back so I couldn't have a chance to win and get back in. It was all the little stuff after that, really, that was more than yeah anything. So so I don't know. I mean, I feel like, you know. There's nothing Jeff worse. Jeff and I went at it for a little while. Jeff and Gord, Jeff, Jeff Gordon and I went at it that's for right. a while. Yeah. And uh, which started from a 100% accident, which we still talk about this and laugh about it. And he, he still, I, I think, mostly believes me. But it was a 100% accident. I spun him out one time. And, where? Uh, it was at Bristol. Yeah, where he comes to pit road. Yeah, so that was funny <clears> when he kind of grabbed my helmet and got yep. all mad. So, so I'm leading this race, and we were really fast on a short run, but we would get too tight. And it was Kurt's – Kurt was always my teammate, and it was his first year with the two-car with Penske. So we're leading a race. I don't know how many laps there was to the end. Um but it was it was in our window where we were going to win, and we we got you know decent lead, and I caught uh, Dale Jarrett, and Dale Jarrett was racing for Michael, and I caught up to him. That's when Bristol was always on the bottom, and he would just cover up the bottom and stop, and he couldn't you couldn't pass an outside, and he would stop so much I couldn't get a run off the corner, and I was like, Sigh. so I'm getting a little bit tighter, right? The wheel's here, and then it's here. And then it's here. Kurt's getting a little closer and a little closer. I was like, it was just dumb on my part. So I was mad at myself because I should have just moved him. I should have ran into him, moved him. But I hate getting ran into. And honestly, I don't like running other people. I very seldom run another, back other people, no matter. I know there's highlights that show that I do, but um, very seldom. Like if I didn't get hit first, very seldom would I hit anybody else to move him. If I couldn't pass him without, you know, run into him, I just wouldn't pass him. Yeah. But this incident was really stupid. Like I should have just, I just had so much respect for him. And I was like, I'm not running into Dale Jarrett. I've watched him race all these years. I'm not, I'm not doing it, you know. I should be able to get by him. And we got about, I don't know, 15 or 20 to go. And I was getting so tight. And now it's almost too late. I never did get by him. And um, I should have moved him. And Kurt, moved, Kurt caught up to me with maybe 15 or 20 to go. And um, he got first corner, got to me, punted me. <laughs> Didn't even give me a corner. Just punted me and moved up the track, passed me, got to Dale. Next corner, punted Dale, passed him. And then I followed him by Dale. And by then, the right front was burned off. And I got passed for second. And then Jeff caught me and passed me for third with, like, maybe – two laps to go. And I mean, I didn't care if I finished third or fourth. I mean, or what, what's the difference, right? And um, so I was fourth. Jeff was third. And, and we went in, the, and I came off turn four, and I was, I don't know, a few feet behind him. And we went into one, the last lap, took the white. And I was just like, I was really deflated, and I was just resigned to finishing where I was. And uh, mad, we got moved out of the way. And I was like, oh, man, this sucks. And, man, he stopped. He just parked it on the bottom and stopped. And I had, I had, was not ready for it. And I hit the by, and I was just late to see it honestly, because I was just I had nobody behind me. I was just going to float in the corner and finish the race, and I wasn't ready for it. And uh, bumped him in the back because I couldn't stop quick enough and spun him out. And that's why I got, that's why it looks so funny afterwards. Like we want to go fight. I was like I was like I cannot believe I just spun him out. I was like I was going over there <laughs> apologize. Never dreamed like he was going to be so pissed off. He's yeah. going to want to you know whip my butt right. So I was like so anyway that was the start kind of our feud. But we got, we got, and then he took me out of Chicago. We were leading the race. And, uh, but we, uh, we worked it out, you know, through the years. It never really escalated yeah. too much farther. Yeah. You didn't have many, you didn't have many run ins. Yeah, I mean, I had, a couple. I had a few here and yeah. there, but I tried not to have Carl. Too many. Yeah, one with Carl. We didn't really have that many really necessarily run ins. We just, um, you know, at times, him and I didn't see eye to eye. We were just different uh, personalities. Oh, back yeah, then. yeah, for sure. We were very different personalities. Ha, yeah. So the infamous thing at Martinsville, where you're getting interviewed and fake he, punch, fake punch was this. Yeah, I, thought, so the, I felt like that was kind of the yeah. kind of the jerkiest thing. It was. So, <laughs> I'm just glad it was fake, man. I'd I'd be dead. <laughs> <laughs> you know that was a while coming. You know, uh, you know. You probably don't know this about me, but I could be a little bit of a smart aleck occasionally. <laughs> occasionally. And, if, if, and yeah. Carl would get under my skin <laughs> about certain things. And some of this is on both of us because neither one of us is probably mature enough to just sit down in a room and talk about it and figure out our differences. But things he would do and not do would get under my skin. And 
things that I would probably do or not do would get under his skin. Racing season is underway. New customers download the DraftKings Sportsbook app and use code DJD. Bet $5 and get $150 in bonus bets instantly. That's code DJD only on DraftKings Sportsbook. Uh, like he was always late and yeah. got under my skin, just bugged me all the time. It was like we'd be here for a photo shoot. No matter what we'd be doing, we'd be 15 minutes late. I'm like, man, we're all here. You're just, it's just respectful to our time to, you know, he'd, everything he'd show up late. And we'd always have that talk. I mean, I don't know why I'm bringing that up. It had nothing to do with that fake punch. But um, there's just like little things. And, and, um, so anyway, there was we got into it in a bush car one time at Kansas. It was kind of um, I kind of squeezed him in the wall. I didn't really mean to squeeze him in the wall, but there's a bunch of lap cars at then. I don't know what happened, and he got mad at that. And then at Martinsville, the whole thing happened. So he caught me with I don't know however many laps to go, and ran in the back of me and punted me out of the way. So this is the way I've always been. So because I, I told you I don't like it hit, and I usually don't like hitting other people. But like if somebody runs in the back of me, I usually just go hit them harder the next corner. So he, teammate or not, I was like, he just punted me out of the way, didn't even try to pass me. So I went into one and I hit him like twice as hard. He went up the track. He didn't wreck or anything. He just went up the track, lost a few spots, and we finished the race and it was over. And that's what that's yeah. what that was all about. He yeah. was mad about it. Said I tried to wreck him, which I didn't try to wreck him. Yeah. So that okay. was it. But you know what? Uh, we've had a couple guests on here. Biffle, um, obviously Robbie Riser has a lot of feelings about Roush. It, is it fair to say though, like the whole organization about that time just had this kind of like cultural kind of tension within it? Because I mean, eventually everybody started to leave. That's one. And then, but like it, it feels like that there was just kind of like this tension and it may, nobody could really kind of place it. I don't know if it was leadership or anything. I don't know what it was. What do you think? Yeah, I, I don't know about that. And then, um, well, to back up real quick to finish off. So then, you know, Carl and I through the years have become become good friends. I have a lot of respect for Carl. Um, I really enjoyed seeing him at Darlington. I haven't mm -hmm. seen him in a long time. Um, and this will tell you something about Carl Edwards. Carl's one of those guys that would do – he I hate to say do almost anything for you because I don't know about that. But he, you know, <laughs> I think a lot of Carl. Like he's a – he's very outgoing. He's a go-getter. Like sometimes you make that – like you probably have a list in your head. Like if I was in dire straits – who are the first 10 people I call, who are the last 10 people I call, right? Like, you know, everybody kind of has that in their head. Well, well, Carl's a guy who would help anybody out. He could be a stranger. He could be whatever. Yeah. Um, he's very smart. Um, he's very, like I say, smart. He's, he's very intelligent on things. So um, anyway, at Darlington, it made me, you know, tell a little story, which maybe I should, maybe I shouldn't. But, you know, Sterling was up on stage with us. And thinking, Sterling didn't I'm look too good. thinking about this right now. Sterling doesn't look too great so i don't think his health is very good and and you couldn't i couldn't communicate with him like i couldn't really i, I didn't really know what he was saying well he, he he looked panicked you know and he's like he wanted to get off that float yeah. before it went around the track but i didn't really know what he wanted so i'm kind of sitting there i'm like well sterling can i get somebody to help you but he couldn't really i couldn't really understand what he was saying you know well carl jumps right up and he's like gets right in his face he's like what and he's like okay he goes i think he wants to get out of here he goes hold on so the thing's getting ready to pull away right like all the rest of us all the rest of us would have just sat there and been like, hey, man, I, you know, maybe flag somebody down, whatever. We all were going to sit Carl, there. Not Carl. He jumps off the back of this trailer that's about this high. He runs over, grabs this big stool, pulls it up to clamp there, climbs up on the trailer, and he grabs Sterling. He's like, come on, Sterling, I'll get you off here. Grabs him, like fireman carries him pretty much, steps off the trailer, off the back of a semi-trailer, no stairs or anything with that thing there, steps back, walks him over the wall, gets him to where he needs to go, and then jumps back up on the trailer to go do the lap. I mean, Amazing. that tells you a lot about the guy – you know, right there, just to finish my Carl stories. So. Perfect. No, that's that's pretty nice. Yeah, yeah. yeah. to be honest with you, because like they'll that that issue at Martinsville changed your opinion of Carl and mine, and I never thought of him the same. It's like because that's what I think about with him, and I thought that was kind of a yeah. uh, that was kind of a cheap move. It was a bad look at the it was a bad the moment for Carl. Yeah, and Carl had a lot of you know. People that that liked him and a lot of people that thought and, he was. Well, the he point had, is, he is that a, these stories a, help uh, us get back to what yeah, the true Carl yeah. is. He frankly. maybe had a little bit of anger issues when he was younger, and um, and he he took everything really really personally. Yes, you know, yeah. like, um, you know, any comment that somebody would make in the media or anything an announcer would say, you know, I think he would confront somebody if you ever say anything bad about him. Like he was very, very. Um, sensitive yeah. when it came to all that stuff very you know didn't, so didn't like I, I wrecked him off a of turn two at michigan, michigan and he come he hits me uh, after the after we the race is going to end there yeller comes off pit road he's he smashing into me yeah um which is fine um i had my hand out the window but um i don't know if he saw it <laughs> i'm just gonna assume he did 
but uh but then he came and to, then victory, he come to lane. victory lane <laughs> and um but he comes up he came over to the bus lot hours later and he came up to me and apologized really yeah. oh that i didn't must know have this been, what year was that Nine, 2004 five oh, really? five hmm. 2004 or five. Yeah. Yeah. He said, Man, I want to know. I want to let you know I shouldn't have came into Victory Lane. I should have handled that differently. I was mad. That was nice. Well, he came uh, to Victory Lane and also put his hands on you. Yeah. Like he grabbed you by the, yeah. you know, like, like we're going to fight in Victory Lane. Yeah. That's, yeah. yeah. Made for good TV. Yeah. I guess. Would have been a short fight, but it made it good for TV. It would have been a short fight, sure. <laughs> you would have loved this. It was the one time Dale gets in victory lane, and, and he comes out, and, and you could hear boos. You could hear boos. Yeah, we got yeah. booed a little bit. Yeah. yeah. And, 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 they and, probably weren't for him, probably because they saw Carl in victory lane. I, no, it was before <laughs> that. It's when he it got was. out of the car. No, really? it was like when he People came. weren't happy with me. They yet. weren't happy. Really? Yeah. Hmm. They, they didn't like it. <laughs> they didn't like it. It's good. They didn't like it's it. Good. I don't know. It's a moment of volume. Yeah. It's when they don't care is when you got to worry. Yeah. That's yeah. right. It was dead silent they introduced you. That's a problem. If you're a pin drop, yeah, yeah, that's a problem. But that's that. Those are good, Carl. I mean, Carl Edwards. I think that's the 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 good side of Carl that we actually want to need to remember because I mean, the Darlington thing. You were so yeah. glad to see him at Darlington. Yeah. Um. You came back really just talking about how in the, in the funny Kyle Bush story that you told. Uh, with yeah, we were <laughs> sitting up there and Kyle gets introduced and everybody's cheers and Carl looks at me and goes, "What the hell's all that?" <laughs> <laughs> While you were sleeping, he's been I, away. He's got to come back and we, Kyle uh, Bush is everybody's. <laughs> Hero, yeah. right? Yeah. Really? Good yeah. cheer now? Really? Yes. That's cool. Yes. Oh, That's man. Funny. Uh, that was good. Yeah, Carl and, uh, Carl and Kyle almost fought once. That would have been a short fight, too. Golly. When we were at Gibbs. Carl was a big, big boy. I don't think you want to mess with. You don't want to. I don't think you'd want to fight with Carl. No. It'd be a real shot. I've never seen him fight. I know that Harvick be... had him in a headlock there in the garage area, which I thought well, was pretty impressive. But Harvick's Harvick a wrestler. had him headlock? Yes. No. I don't, Harvick's I don't bus it. driver had him in a headlock. Really? And that, don't you remember, really? uh, remember Cowboy? Remember, Carl goes over to the garage in, to, into Harvick's garage stall, and I thought they wrestled. Well, maybe they did. Maybe we're, I don't know. this is the same story. I don't know, but I just know that uh, Harvick's bus driver, who was freaking strong, just strong dude, and he, he got Carl in place. That's the one person I know that actually yeah. Carl doesn't even stand up to. I don't that. know, man. All those garage fights, you know, people talk about like when I charged Kozlowski and try to tackle him yeah. and stuff. All those garage oh, right. fights and stuff. What I were mean, you going to do? I, well, here's the same as all the rest of you guys and <laughs> Jeff Gordon up here wrote stuff, right? You glance over both shoulders and you see how close the officials are and your bus driver is and stuff. You're like, okay, I'm going to only have three seconds. I got to go get them. Yeah. Right? Then they're going to tear us apart. Like, but I mean, you, that, you yeah, the fight, video, don't fight like outside the track somewhere. The like, no you, way I would do that. I know, but the video of you running into the alley in between those two haulers and then you kind of just football tackle him. Yeah. <laughs> what was your what was, was a great tackle. What was your was, plan? What was the plan in the moment? <laughs> I don't really have one. I, so were he, you trying he, to take him to the ground? So him early? and I. So I think this is probably the same year. So him and I were going at a little bit, and um, honestly, the reason I got so mad there it was after the race. I had all my seatbelts off. I was yeah. hanging my helmet up on the hook. We're down to turn four. He, and he comes and pile drives me inside the car. And I'm like, man, you hurt somebody doing that. I mean, on the track's one thing, right? Mm-hmm. Like I get it. We're all driving on. Even if you're under yellow, everybody's buckled in. We're in race cars. I understand it, but so that's what set me off on that yeah. one. I guess. But you, you were you thinking, man, take him to the ground early? I wasn't really thinking, obviously. <laughs> right? So we went back and changed and went home. <laughs> I wasn't really thinking at all. Yeah. Uh, Who has those moments? I forget Matt being in all these little. I know, right? Yeah. Yeah. I think we got all of them, though. I think there's only three or four of them. Okay. We were going to talk about Hall of Fame stuff or something, you know? That, that, yeah. Now these, That's these boring. fights. That's all boring. So why were. Um, what, was, what, what was your personality? Like, because. Well, so I asked that question because and I, I know we're all f-ing out of order here, but but, but <laughs> people like when you were racing, I don't. I'm just going off of what people say, but because I don't really remember hearing about it much. But in the moment, but like when you raced late models up north, like you had a nickname, Matt the Brat. Like was was that really it's just because it rhymed? Just oh. because it rhymed. <laughs> Come on, there's other things that rhyme. Nah, I mean, so, Matt. Like, wait, like what? I heard, I heard your driving style. Matt the cat. was aggressive. <laughs> I mean, probably not when. So Todd Bailey is an announcer at Slinger. Mm-hmm. Um, he's, he's always an announcer that. up there. What's that? He started that at Slinger, but he had nicknames for, for everybody. Everybody went. Could did you go up for to everybody? Him and go, you know, Conrad Morgan's car was black and. You know, black and blue is ninety two. The black and blue ninety two of Conrad Morgan. He yeah, looks did like you he had it for up, everybody. Did you go up to the guy and go, "Hey, man, can you change that? I don't yeah, really no, like that." No, I didn't care. That, well, I didn't really care to be honest with you. Um, and no, I would never ask him to change it. I mean, that's the best way to get somebody not to, right? That's yeah. right. Like, that's true. 
you know, I tell Fair my kids enough. that all the time, right? When they go to school and somebody says something and it bothers you, if you act like it bothers you, they're going to keep saying it. So yeah. it, it really didn't bother me anyway. So you weren't truly a brat. Well, I might have been, but it didn't bother me. <laughs> so it didn't bother me. I don't, I can't I imagine you being, I can't see you being bratty. I can't see you being. Yeah, I, I yeah, no, I don't. I, you're self made. Just kind of. You're self made. Like you say, you worked on your own cars, you did everything. You know, you know how to, you knew when I was racing you in the bush series you were doing your own shocks yeah um, yeah i did them in the bush car i did my first year in a cup car too yeah yeah i always liked doing them it gave me something to do and i'd go to the shop and work on them and yeah. try something new so um, i was scared yeah, of i remember them. we won a dangerous we won a bush race somewhere especially the tie down shocks yeah when uh so they made that rule in the bush series when you had to run those three thirty thousandth bleed holes remember mm-hmm. that and uh, so I did all this research, and I figured out that, you know, obviously the longer you make the hole, the less fluid that's going to flow through it. It takes longer for the fluid to get through it, and you could put a bunch more rebounds. So Carrera had, like, the thickest pistons, so I got some Carrera shocks and drilled them all. I drilled them all by hand, so it probably wasn't super precision. Maybe we had a little <laughs> drill press there. So, I mean, they probably were more than 30 thousandths. But um, anyway, it held the car lower than everybody else's, and we won a race on them. So I was proud of that because I kind of figured out and researched all the shocks and found them and built those. I remember doing it. That was kind of fun back in the day when you could always Some do creativity. that stuff and just, kind of, yeah, kind of creative, but you didn't have to be, uh, you have to be very smart because I'm not very smart. So you didn't have to have an engineering background or a college degree or com- computer simulation. You would just look at stuff and try it. And that yeah. was, that was fun. I'm glad I lived in that day in my career because we, uh, you know, Robbie and I together, we tried a lot of stuff just by, you know, common sense stuff or stuff yeah. you would think about or try and look at and not really something you'd come up with in a simulator. Hey, if you like that video, you'll love the entire podcast, the Dale Jr. Download. It's available on all major podcast platforms. 